What's up guys, Fanny Teeny here, and I am hyped! Pokemon Ultra Soon in One has come out, and we've got a ton of new Pokemon and a ton of new movesets. Now today, I want to focus on one particular Pokemon, which I think is especially good, especially dangerous, and that is Naganadel. Now, Naganadel is an Ultra Beast, actually an evolution of a pre-Ultra Beast, I think. So, that's actually very interesting. I don't think we've seen that before. Normally, all Ultra Beasts have been one-stage evolutions. And Naganadel doesn't actually have the greatest BST. In fact, its HP, Attack, Defense, and Special Defense are all 73, which is mediocre. But then we look at its speed and its Special Attack. 127 Special Attack and 121 Speed. That's very respectable. That Special Attack is near the levels of, say, Keldeo or something, and Speed is very, very fast. It's still slower than Greninja, but still very fast. However, what sets apart Naganadel is its move sets, and I want to spend some time today talking about how you can make a Naganadel set that is going to be extremely effective in tearing through your opponent, just getting kills and picking up sweeps along the way. So first I want to talk about the Sweeper Naganadel, which is going to be a nasty plot Naganadel with two stab moves, Draco Meteor, Sludge Wave, and an incredibly great coverage move for, for Poison Dragon Stab, Flamethrower. Now the biggest weakness of Dragon Stab is of course Fairy types and Steel types, and Naganadil covers that all by itself. Sludge Wave takes care of all the fairies and gives it another nice neutral hard hitting stab to just clean with, because Draco Meter of course will drop your special attack, and it's got Flamethrower which is going to hit all the steels like Scizor, Ferrothorn, Kartana, um, Celesteela, um, Magirna, of course it's not going to hit Heatran. And that's why we have the Dragonium Z. The Dragonium Z powers up your Draco Meteor, so you have one super powerful Dragon Stab, I think around 185 base power. Just on a plus two, it's going to nuke everything. It's going to Oko at Toxapex after rocks. It's going to do around 78 to 93% to a regular Heatran which is absolutely insane, and to add on top of that, a Heatran's Earth Power isn't even going to KO this despite its mediocre defenses. So even though Heatran's a very nice counter to this thing, coverage-wise, Naganadel can actually just power right through it. And the other great thing it has is Beast Boost. What Beast Boost does is this, since Naganadel's highest stat is its speed when running a timid nature, Naganadel's speed is going to be boosted after it gets a kill. And what this does is it crucially allows it to outspeed pretty much every relevant Scarfer in the metagame, almost every relevant Scarfer in the metagame, making it faster than Keldeo, Latios, Landorus, all of those Pokemon, and just just clean right through. Going to be faster than stuff like Tapu Koko, um, faster than like, like all those things, faster than Scarf Tapu Lele. It's just going to get that speed boost and become uncontrollable. And when you have a plus two on top of that with this insane coverage, Naganadel can quickly become impossible to stop and it can just steamroll right through your opponent. So the next set I want to talk about is Choice Specs. Now, of course, Choice Specs has the same benefit that the Nasty Plot set has, wherein you're going to get a speed boost after getting a kill. And with a Choice Specs, this can easily lead to an end game cleaning situation if if the thing if the cards are played right and you can clean with only one attack. Now, Choice Specs is perhaps not as good as breaking because you don't have the time to set up and you won't hit as hard after the turn of setup. But the the benefit of Choice Specs and is you get some insane power behind it and you also get access to some utility moves. So Nagandal's uh, move slot is actually very, very diverse. Uh, actually has a ton of options. But one of the best options in this slot is U-Turn. And this what, what this allows you to do is just switch right out of potential counters like Magirna, Heatran, Toxapex, Chansey. Just switch right out and go to a Mon that can take it down and help weaken it and soften it up for a late game clean. An alternative is to run Hidden Power Ground. And Hidden Power Ground does a ton to Heatran actually uh, with a choice specs. Let's throw in the choice specs and take off the plus two. It's going to do 97 to 115 to Heatran. Oko. And Heatran's a general switch into this mod. So Naganadil is very, very dangerous. And of course, you're going to pick up the speed boost, making it even harder to revenge kill. So, And it's just a very strong breaker right off the bat. It has powers comparable to Specs Keldeo, except it has even stronger moves than Draco Meter and a much wider expanse of coverage. So these are the two sets that I think Naganadel can do best. I have considered a Scarf set, and on a Scarf set you would run 
modest nature so you can get a special attack boost after every hit. The problem with the Scarf set is that it's slower than Scarf Cortana, slower than Scarf Keldeo, slower than Scarf Latios, it's slower than all those mons, and I think that's a very big drawback of Scarf Naganadel. So that's why I think, first of all, Nasty Plot set is, I think, easily the best set, but Specs is also quite good, and I think these two are really the two sets to use. Now, you've already decided, let's say you've decided you want to build a Nasty Plot set, or let's say you want to use a Choice Spec set. You need to know how are you going to add Pokemon to pair with Naganadel to facilitate its sweep, to allow Naganadel to really shine and just power through your opponent because you removed all of its counters. So first, let's consider what can really stop Naganadel. So the first obvious thing that came to mind, which I mentioned before, is Heatran. Heatran, of course, is typed with Flash Fire, and the fire still typing, which will mean it'll resist Draco Meter and be immune to Sludge Wave and Flamethrower. So obviously that's very, very good, but as I showed you, Naganadel can run HP ground to hit it, and if you're using the sweeper set with the Draconium Z, all you need to do is get enough chip damage on this Heatran to put it in range. So some strategies, uh, so some strategies. One is to use Ch Choice Bantaranitar. What Choice Bantaranitar does, or even just regular Tarantar, is it allows you to threaten out the Heatran and hit it with a Pursuit on the Switch. And it's a really good strategy for weakening Heatran immensely and putting it in range of Naganadel. Another idea is to use a Scarf or like Sacred Ninja, and, or sorry, not a Scarf, a Spiker, like Sacred Ninja or even Ferrothorn, to try to lay up chip damage on this Heatran, because every time it switches in, it's going to take more and more damage, and it's just going to wear it down faster and faster for Naganadel to sweep. In fact, if only, only Strox and Stealth Rocks and Spikes, it's already in range of a plus 2 Z Draco Meteor. So that's one way to take care of it. Talk Specs is another potential answer. With a lot of special defense and haze, it can eliminate your boost, and it can easily switch into the Choice Specs set and scout what Nagando is going for. So I think the key here is the Nasty Plus set will beat the Tox effects, it's mostly the Choice Specs set that won't. So maybe you want to pair Naganadel with something that takes advantage of Tox Specs, like Tapu Lele. I haven't put that on here, actually I can... I forgot to put Tapu Lele. Say Tapu Lele, a very strong ground type like Garchomp, Lando, Zygarde, um, or Pokemon like that, that can really take advantage of Tox Specs. The other strategy you can kind of do is, again, to lay up hazards on Tox Specs. With a Spiker like Greninja, if you got rocks and spikes up, Tox Specs won't be able to take two Draco Meters, and it'll start to get worn down very quickly. Plus, with Tarantar, you can set up Sand, and the Sand actually limits Tox Specs recovery, so that a Draco Meter plus a minus two Draco Meter will KO Tox Specs after rocks damage. So those are all some strategies you can deal with Tox Specs, and as you can see, Tarantar is showing to be a very good partner. Another mod it's really great for is Chansey. Chansey you're only going to really see on stall teams, so I wouldn't worry about Chansey too much because I don't think anyone wants to really be playing with stall right now with all the new Pokemon out. But if you face a Chansey, Chansey is going to just completely hard stop Naganadel. I think Nasty Plot Set could probably boost through it since um, if you run some HP, you could. Chansey is going to take you out in three seismic tosses, so it may not be possible. But if you ran some HP, you probably could power through Chansey, although I wouldn't recommend it. Instead, you can use something like T Char and again, threaten it out with the threat of a CB Stone Edge or Super Power and pursue it on the switch or hit it while it stays in. And if you can get that right, you can get a big damage off on Chansey and set up the situation for Naganadel to win. Um, another Mon that can sort of check Naganadel is Magirna. Now Magirna's Assault Vest Magirna's Floor Cannon will not KO Naganadel, but with Stealth Rocks and a little chip like Sand, Burn, Priority, it will knock out Naganadel. However, the other thing Magirna can do is Volt Switch out after taking a plus two Fire Blast or Flamethrower. Oh, that's one thing I forgot to mention. Naganadel does have Fire Blast, and you may think, what if it has Fire Blast, why use Flamethrower? Fire Blast is stronger. The thing is, Fire Blast has a 15% chance to miss, and that can lose a game. And I ran some calcs, and obviously you're not gonna need Fire Blast to KO something like Ferrothor and Cartana or Scizor, but you don't really need it for KOing Magirna necessarily, because Flamethrower already does very solidly over 50%, so it's simply a matter of putting Magirna in range. And to Celesteela, Celesteela is the only really relevant mon where it won't instantly KO, but even then, with just a little bit of previous chip, Flamethrower will KO. It'll KO Bisharp, it'll KO Mawile, all of those Pokemon will be KO'd by Flamethrower. So I think Fire Blast is an unnecessary risk. You could also use, I definitely with Specs, you don't need the power of Fire Blast, you can definitely just afford to run Flamethrower, but I think with even with the Nasty Plot set, I'd rather run Flamethrower rather than Fire Blast, because I prefer not, being, not missing, 
and that helps you ensure a sweep goes cleanly according to plan. Now, of course, back to Magirna. The thing Magirna can do is it can eat a plus two fire, a fire blast or flamethrower and volt switch out of there. And by not giving Naganadel a kill right away, it's gonna prevent Nagandel from getting a speed boost, which means that the opponent has a slow Scarfer such as uh, Latios, then they'll be able to bring that in and force Nagandel out. So of course that's one worry. Another worry is of course Nasty plotting on a hard switch to an offensive mon that's faster and threatens you out. That can also limit a sweep, so that requires some careful play as well. Uh, one thing you could try, although I don't recommend it, is to run a Fireum Z set, and this time Fire Blast is okay since you want to power this up. And I think that would Oko Magirna actually. Let's just take a look. Uh, let's just make this Fire Blast and make that a Z move. Make this an Assault Vest Magirna with plus two. And that is a clean KO. Very clean KO. After Rocks, a very clean KO against Max Special Defense Assault Vest Magirna. This thing has base eight, base 115 spdf, base 80 HP. That's really insane tower. So, of course, I recommend the Draconium Z, just because it's very convenient with Draco Meter, which drops your special attack. And, uh, and it just, it's better for dealing with stuff like Heatran, Toxapex, but you can definitely run that if you're worried about Magirna. What I instead recommend is trying things that kind of push down on Magirna. So one is like other special attackers like Greninja, uh, Ash Greninja, Tapu Lele, Latios, Tapu Coco that's special. Another method is to use Magnezone, which can use Magnet Pull to trap the Magirna and get off the necessary chip damage that you need with a move, say, Thunderbolt. Or, um, or Gigavolt Havoc if you want to run Electrum and it specs Naganadel uh, and you haven't consumed the Z move, or if it's specs Magnazone and, uh, and NP Naganadel, basically you can just get off a lot of big damage on this Assault Vest Magirna and put it in range of the Naganadel. So that's one strategy you can take to help set up your sweep. Now, there are also offensive ways to deal with Naganadel. One of them is to use priority. Now, Naganadel actually has a really nice typing with the dragon, allowing it to resist things like water shuriken, aqua jet, take neutral damage from bullet punch, and not take much from things like quick attack, obviously, but in general, really nice typing. So the only really thing that threatens it is ice shard uh, from a priority standpoint. And the strongest ice shard you'll get there is choice band Weavile's ice shard. Maybe choice band Mamoswine is a little bit stronger, but Weavile's Ice Shard is going to be able to knock out the... Actually, let's just calc this. Weavile Ice Shard with a choice ban is actually not going to even Oko. That's insane. So you're going to need some... And with a low roll. If, with Stealth Rocks, it has a very, very good chance of knocking you out. A 75% chance. So you need to be careful about Weavile. Uh, so Weavile is actually a strategy if, you, if you're worried about opposing Naganadil. That's something maybe you can try on your team. Um, but if you're worried about Weavile, what I would suggest is have Stealth Rocks, and again, Pursuit is really, really nice, and Tyranitar can Pursuit the Weavile after Stealth Rocks damage, get some Sand Chip on it, and put it in range so that after switching in once, it can't come back again, and the Ganondale is free to sweep. So that's one strategy, and of course, Choice Scarfers that are faster than the Ganondale, even after a speed boost, and can do something like Protean Ice Beam to knock it out, are also going to be very good. So Greninja is going to be able to revenge Naganadel, which is a really nice trait right now, since a lot of Scarfers are now seeming seemingly slow, since Naganadel will be faster after a beast boost. So you can use like Scarf Greninja, Scarf Tapu Koko may not be able to get the KO, but you could try Scarf Tapu Koko, um, other things like that. You can also use priority users like Fake Out Metacham, Fake Out Low Punny to help get chip on this Naganadel. Your own T-Tar can if it's a very bulky T-Tar, can potentially take a hit, and it can also set up the sand to help get that chip on the Naganadel. Because even though Naganadel's bulk is a little bit less, it's just enough that it seems to be able to take a lot of attacks. It can take an uninvested Earth Power from Heatran, a Flora Cannon from Magirna, an Ice Shard from Weavile if the right conditions are there. So getting that all that necessary chip, chip damage. Chip damage is key to setting up for a clean sweep with Naganadel. But you're not going to be able to sweep a team right from the very, very start, even if Naganda looks very, very dangerous. You've got to get those key chip damages in first with your other members before you find that opportunity to set up. Now, one thing I haven't talked about, which is very important, is where are you going to get the chance to nasty plot with Naganda? Well, in some situations, I don't think you even need to necessarily. Sometimes, in the, if the opponent's team has been weakened enough, you may not even need to use nasty plot. But some ideas, you can maybe nasty plot on 
Alamomola or Toxapex. Um, for example, like Alamomola wouldn't be able to touch it, Toxapex wouldn't be able to do much either. Um, so and again, it can set up on things like that. Um, you could even set up on like Ferrothorn if you're not worried about Leech Seed, the best it can do is Power Whip. Uh, you could set up on Magnezone because it has really good typing with that Dragon type. You could set up on Keldeo um, if you're not worried about like a priority hint and stuff. So the Ganondorf has finds a lot of opportunities to set up, so I would not be worried about that. It's mostly about facilitating the conditions to sweep or maybe get the KOs that you need to clean up with Naganadel. Now, um, I think that mostly covers it, so yeah, Nasty Plot Naganadel is definitely the set I would try out first. This thing is really, really dangerous. Of course, feel free to use Fire Blast if you prefer the power. I just like Flamethrower for the accuracy. But yeah, this this set is very, very dangerous. And again, plus two Z Drago meter, very strong. With Beast Boost in, and this coverage, insane sweeping potential. Like, you can literally go, you can plan a game so that you lose all five of your Mons and your opponent has all six but you created the conditions where Naganadel comes in and just wins the game. That's entirely possible. So don't feel don't feel afraid to experiment a little bit. And of course, Choice Specs Naganadel, where you can also run things like HP Ground if you want. I'm sure there are some other options that I've missed. Um, Tailwind, interesting. Uh, Substitutes. Uh, some interesting moves, but I think I think these are the best two sets from my experience of playing with Naganadel. Um, I think these two sets are definitely the best ones you want to try out. So yeah, have some fun with it. Choice specs. Have some fun with it, and of course, I'm going to be uploading another video in which I pl in which I play with my a team I built around the NP set and the choice spec set. So of course, look out for that later in the day or maybe the next day. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, that's that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure to do that and like this video, and I'll see you guys later.